How long you staying in Thailand? How long you plan to stay in Thailand? Seven days. Seven days, I think. Seven days. Where have you been? Patunthani. Patunthani. Nampuji. Yeah. Bujangan. Asokalam. Wat asokalam. Not not wat asokalam. Not the Patunthani. 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 Wat pa purita. Wat pa. Where else did you go besides? Uh, after yesterday we came here. Uh, you did not go to Udon Thani yet. No, no. This this trip we never go. I see. What is your plan for this trip? Uh, this trip we stay we come for uh, Rumpuchak Nganani. Then uh, after that we came here. I see. Rumpuchak yeah. has a what anniversary? Yes, date anniversary. Uh, his death. อย่างเด็กนี่เสร็จนะเนี่ยครอบครัวมาแล้วภาพครับติดเก้าครับติดเก้าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ
we really are. And when we don't know who we really are, we lose our direction instead of taking care of our, our real self, our true self. We go take care of things that are not our self. And we just, no matter how well we take care or look after the things that we think that they are our self, you will lose them anyway. Like the, your body, no matter how well you take care, <coughs> one day it's going to get old, it's going to get sick, and it's going to die. So it's a waste of time to spend all your energy and your effort, all your resources, looking after your body. You should spend all your energy, your resources, looking after your mind. Because your mind is your true self. Right now your mind hasn't been looked after, hasn't been taken care of. So your mind is always in a state of suffering, in a state of stress, uh, unhappiness, sadness, worry, anxiety. You worry about everything, but you never worry about yourself. What you should worry is, is yourself, but the problem is you don't know who yourself is. You think the body is yourself. So you become engaged looking after your body, which is something that you cannot preserve anyway. No matter how well you look after your body, your body will eventually dissolve because that's the nature of the body. So this is what we should know and then try to convince ourselves the truth. Right now we've been surrounded or been controlled by delusion, by ignorance, to the point where we take uh, the thing that is not real to be the truth. And we don't believe the truth. When the Buddha says your body is not yourself, you don't believe it. Because you have been so convinced that your body is yourself for a long time. So no matter what the Buddha said, you will still not be able to do what he tells you to do. is to abandon your body, to let go of your body. Look after your body like you're looking after a dog, a pet. Don't think that it, it is you. you know, give it food, give it shelter, give it clothing, give it medicine. But don't expect it to live forever. Come and take care of your mind. <coughs> Teach your mind to be strong, to be able to let go of your body. Don't, don't rely on your body for your happiness. Right now, you rely on your body for your happiness. So, if you lose your body, you feel that you would no longer have any happiness. But in fact, if you can let go of your body, you will find a better happiness. A, be a, happiness, a, a happiness that is much better than using your body. So this is what the Buddha wants us to do. Take care of our true self, which is the mind, by teaching the mind to let go of everything. Let go of your body, let go of other people's body, let go of your possession, your wealth. You don't need them. They are more harmful than beneficial. If you can do this, you'll find another kind of happiness that is much better than the kind of happiness that you are experiencing now. Because the ex happiness that you experience now is temporarily happiness. You go to a movie you enjoy. When you get out of the movie, you lose you lost that enjoyment. So you have to go back for more movies. 
you go to a, a party, you enjoy it. When you come home, you lost that enjoyment. So you have to go back to, to more parties. So this is not, this is the kind of happiness that you are experiencing, which is never satisfying, which never fulfilling. You have to have more and more and more. But one day when your body can no longer do what you want to do, then what do you do? You become depressed when you have to stay home like an old, per an old person cannot go outside to enjoy what you used to enjoy. See, this is the problem with the happiness that you are having. One day you will no longer be able to enjoy this happiness. And what do you do? You will just live in depression, like so many people do. You live alone, you become lonely, you become sad. But if you can do what the Buddha teaches you to do, you will not have to go through this experience. You can find another kind of happiness, which is much better than the happiness that you have right now. That is the happiness of the mind. And in order to have this happiness, you have to have time to create this happiness. You have to have time to be alone, to sit quietly, to steal your thoughts, steal your mind. When you achieve this, you will find another kind of happiness. It is called the peace of mind, which is the true happiness, because you can have it all the time. You don't have to have your body to get this kind of happiness. You don't have to have money. Right now, you have to have a good body, a strong, a healthy body. You also need to have money. And in order to get money, you have to work hard. Working is not good. Nobody likes to work. But we all have to work. Because we know if we don't work, we don't have money. And if we don't have money, we have no happiness. This is the happiness that we are having, which is very precarious. Because you don't know when you will not be able to make money anymore. You don't know when you're going to run out of money. And when you run out of money, you don't know how to cope with it. You cannot stay at home, sit still, and be happy. So this is what the Buddha wants us to, to learn to do, to be able to stay at home, sit still, and be happy. We can be happy without having to do anything. If we can control our thoughts, control our desire. Our desire needs our thinking. You have to think before you can have desire. But you have to think of, of someone, some place. Then you say, oh, I want to go to that place. I want to see that person. But if you don't think about that person or that place, then you won't have any desire for that person or that place. So the key to our ability to be able to sit still, to enjoy, being alone, not doing anything, is to stop thinking. If we can stop thinking, we can stop our desire. And when we can stop our desire, we will find peace and happiness. This, our desire is the one that is our problem. When we have desire, we cannot stay put, we cannot keep still. 
we have to go get what we want. If you want a cup of coffee, you cannot say no to yourself. When you say no, you feel bad. But if you never think of having a cup of coffee, then you won't have to go and get a cup of coffee. So this is where we have to, what we have to do is to control our thinking. Not let the mind think in the way of desire. Can you do that? And the way to control our thinking is to meditate. We have to find something for the mind to do in order for it to forget about everything else. Like Nong Pu Man say, recite the name of the Buddha. Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. If you can recite the name of the Buddha all day long, then you won't be able to think of getting a cup of coffee, getting a bowl of noodles, going to a movie, go shopping, go see your friend, go do this and do that. Then you can stay at home and have happiness. The problem is you cannot control your thoughts. When you get up, you start thinking, who am I going to go to see today? What am I going to do today? <laughs> so your, your desire already <coughs> leads you. You never control your desire. So what you should do when you get up, as soon as you get up, you become aware of yourself. What you should do is repeat the name of the Buddha. Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. Then you will not be able to think about what you want to do today where you want to go, who you want to see. Then you can stay at home and be happy. So, Kanachan, how about the desire to go to temple or to meet teachers? Is that a desire that also obstructs our, our stillness? It depends on where you are, see. If you are beginning, you're not meditating yet, you don't know how to meditate, then you have to go to the temple to ask for instruction. But once you already know the instruction, then you must prevent yourself from going to the temple. You must find a place quiet. Now you have to learn to meditate, to control your thinking. Except when you have questions or you come into some obstacle on your practice, in your practice, then you will have to go seek advice again, then you can go to the temple again. But don't go to temple simply because you believe it's good for you, without knowing what is good for you. Going to temple is good for beginners, people who does not know what to do yet, like you coming here today. But once you know what to do, then you must do what you're supposed to do, instead of going to temple. If you want to go to temple and not do what you're supposed to do, then you are being misguided. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. It's like children who doesn't want to go to school, so they say, I want to go to the temple. It's an excuse not to do what you're supposed to do. Once you know what to do, then you should do what you're supposed to do, and only go to temple or go to wherever you have to go for a particular reason, purpose. Not go just because you've been taught to believe that going to temple is good for you. Because some of them, some of my friends here, they go to temple like almost every day. They go to Hawaii, Ajahn, and do and everything. That's also the desire. Yes, this is good if, if you are on that level. See? If you are on the level of charity, you want to give, you want to share your money, your wealth to other people. That's good. But you have to move up the ladder. It's like going to school. The Buddha teaches three levels of practice. The first level is charity, giving, dana. The second level is sila, keeping the precept. 
The third level is meditation. See, I'm talking about the advanced. The, the I'm not talking about beginner or intermediate stage. I'm talking about the advanced stage, because generally you don't hear this advanced stage. You only been taught to give dana to do charity, which is good, but it's not good enough. They are the step toward your 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 higher uh, practice. It's like going to school. You cannot go straight to college or university. You must go through kindergarten, go to elementary and secondary high school before you can enter the university. But here you come here. This is like a university. So you hear what you learn in the university. So it might contradict what you've been taught, because what you've been taught was to learn to chant, to learn to learn A, B, C, learn how to add up one, two, three. You ever learn about how to apply your 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 thought into a, something deeper and higher? But it's just my way of teaching. Because charity and sila, keeping the precept, is very common and very easy to understand. What is hard or very difficult to understand, and not many people, not many people can explain it to you clearly, is the practice of meditation, the purpose of meditation what you expect, what you're supposed to get from your meditation. This you will not hear very often. Most monks will teach you, give that money, give money. Especially give it to the monks themselves. Sometimes you give them too much money and you spoil them. Sometimes you encourage them to disrobe <laughs> because they get too much money. So they want to spend the money. That's why the Buddha did not want to monks to receive money. But some people asked the Buddha for some exemption because some monks might need some special, have special needs like medicine or something that might have to use money for. So the Buddha said, it's okay to give money, but not to give it to the monk. Give it to a lay person to, uh, to service the monk. When the monk needs something, let the lay person provide that thing to the monk. And the thing that monk needs should be within the bound of the four requisites, that is food, shelter, clothing, and medicine. Not buying luxury items. Things that are not necessary for the practice of meditation or for the maintaining of life. But nowadays, there, this, uh, this understanding has been lost. When many people give money, they give to the monk, then monks think they can do, use that money for whatever, for whatever they want. If they want to buy a new phone, they buy a new phone. If they want to buy a video camera, they buy it. If they want to go to Singapore, they go to Singapore. So this is not supporting the life of a holy uh, man. You should support the monk to go live in the forest to practice meditation. Support monks like Long Pu Man. He never go to the shopping mall. He never went to the shopping mall. He never go collect money from many people. He always live in the forest. He let people come and see him 
not ego to see the people. Nowadays, it's the other way around. Now you got monks go all over the world seeing lay people, teaching lay people, and getting money from them. And what do we, what result do you get? Do you get any enlightenment from these practices? You don't get any enlightenment. You forget your real goal. Your real goal is enlightenment to realize your true self, who you really are. Because if you realize who you truly are, you will liberate yourself from the bondage of suffering. Right now you are under the bondage of the cycle of birth and death. You don't know that. You think that maybe after you die everything is over. But that's not the case. The case is after the body breaks down, your mind goes to another body, go to another cycle of birth, aging, sickness, and death, like we, like you are going through now. This cycle might have been the ten billion cycle already of your, of your birth, aging, sickness, and death. So you want to stop this cycle. Who wants to get old? Who wants to get sick? Who wants to die? When you get old, when you get sick, when you die, how do you feel? You feel happy? You feel good? But you keep coming back to do the same thing all over again for countless of times already. And you will continue to do this until you come and meet the Buddha or his teaching. When you come to meet Buddhism, then Buddhism will teach you to stop this cycle of birth, aging, sickness, and death by doing the three steps of practice. First, do charity, <coughs> dana, giving. Don't, uh, don't be stingy. Don't be attached to your money or your possession. They do you more harm than good if you don't know how to use them. Money, possession is only good for your maintenance of your life. But if you use money or possession for happiness, then you are actually buying suffering. Because when you spend money to buy happiness, then you have to work hard to get more money. When you work, you will have to suffer. And when you, you spend money to buy happiness, it becomes an addiction. You have to spend more money to buy more happiness. And when you are not able to do this, you, be, you become like a drug, a drug addict who cannot buy any drug to satisfy his desire, his, his habit. So what does he do? He would go and commit crime, steal, kill, to get money, so he can buy more drugs. So this is the, the harm in using money to buy happiness. So we should not use money for this purpose. We should use money only to support our existence. And then we will have the time to move up to the second and third level of practice. That is keeping the precept and meditate. Even you don't have to spend a lot of money, then you don't have to work too much. You might work just once, once a week, you will have enough money to pay for your food for the whole month already. Then you will have the time to go to the temple to meditate or stay at home and meditate and find the real happiness, the true happiness. This is the purpose of giving money away to cut off the bridge of your desire to buy, to use money to buy happiness. Your money is like the bridge for you to 
go get the kind of happiness that is harmful to you because you have to keep filling it up again and again. You have to keep doing it again and again. So you want to stop doing this. Stop using money to buy happiness. Instead of using money for buying happiness, give this money away. Help those who are in need. You don't have to give to the temple alone only. You can give it to the hospital, to school, to charity. As long, so long as you don't use that money, that can bring harm to you. Or if you don't want to spend it, you can keep it for future use. You might not know what will happen in the future. So you might have to have some in reserve in case you cannot work or cannot uh, get any more money then you can rely on the money that you have saved to help you in your time of need. This is the purpose of money. The Buddha wants us to free ourselves from the, the, the work of making money. He wants us to have the time to make happiness without using money. And this happiness is sitting in meditation, controlling your thoughts, reciting the name of the Buddha. If you can persist in reciting the name of the Buddha without thinking about other things, your mind will drop into calm. Once it becomes calm, you will find fulfillment. You will find bliss, happiness, contentment. You don't want to have anything. You don't, you, you don't feel like you need anything. You are full and complete in yourself. This is why we, where we want to go. This is the real kind of happiness. Because once you know how to create, then you can keep on creating it all the time. And you don't need to have money to create this. You don't have to have a healthy, strong body to create it. You can do it while you are sick or handicapped. You can still do it. So this is what you should try to strive for, go after the time to meditate. In order to meditate successfully, you have to control your thinking all the time. From the time you get up to the time you go to sleep. Keep reciting the name of the Buddha mentally. No matter what you do, whatever you do, keep reciting the name of the Buddha. You only stop reciting only when you have to use your thought for the work that you do. Like when you have to do accounting work, you have to stop your, your, your reciting of the Buddha and concentrate on your work accounting, like, you know, adding, subtracting, or whatever you have to do that requires your thinking, then you can stop the reciting temporarily. But once you finish what you have to do, what you have to think, don't let your mind think about going to a movie, going to buy a new bag, new dress, new sh pair of shoes, going to Japan, going to Korea, you know. Don't let it think. Come back. Bring it back to Buddha, Buddha, Bhutto, Bhutto. Yeah. Then that way you won't have to spend any money. If you think about going to Japan, going to Korea, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. Then you won't have enough money. Then you won't have to work harder. Then you won't have any time to meditate. If you don't meditate, you will never stop this cycle of birth, aging, and death. So this is where you have to go if you want to release yourself from the, the round of suffering, the round of birth, aging, sickness, and death.
and nobody can do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So I hope you understand the three <coughs> steps of practice that the Buddha prescribed to you. You have to give in order to cut off your dependence on money. If you have too much money, give it away. Don't keep it. Mm -hmm. Because then you'll be tempted to use it in the wrong way. Once you give, you will find it easy to keep the precept. Because when you give, you have made you have made the loving kindness. You think good. You think of the welfare of other people. So when you think of the welfare of other people, you don't want to hurt them. So you find keeping the precept very easy. The reason people cannot keep the precept is because of their desire to make money, to do things for themselves, to get happiness for themselves. So they don't care how others might, might, might be hurt from their own action. But if you keep giving to other people, helping other people, then when whatever you do, you will be very considerate of other people's uh, whether they become affected by your action or not. So you will be very mindful that whatever you do, you will not hurt them. So you would not want, like you, you would not kill, you would not steal, you would not cheat. You will not lie. See. You will not drink or get drunk. Once you can maintain the precept, then it will be easy for you to meditate because your mind will be peaceful and calm. If you cannot keep the precept, your mind can be afflicted by worry because you might have done something wrong and you feel bad. You feel you know, you are worried you might have to pay for what you did. But if you have not done anything wrong, then your mind will not be affected by worry or anxiety. Then you can meditate easily. You can control your thinking. You can recite the name of the Buddha all day long. Once you have recited the name of the Buddha continuously, then the next thing is to find time to sit down, which you will have if you don't have to work a lot to make money. Then you will have time to sit down and meditate. And when you sit down and meditate, your mind will enter into calm very easily. And once you have experienced the peace that you have, uh, you have acquired through your meditation, you will become satisfy. You will know this is the your true happiness. You will know that no one can take this happiness from you. Then you will want to maintain it. So you will spend more time meditating. And eventually you will become master of your own mind. You will be able to control your desire. You will be able to eliminate all kinds of stress and sadness from your mind. This is how the Buddha did it. And this is what he told us to do. If we follow his instruction, we will achieve the same result. So this is what the this is the message I will give it to you. If it's not clear enough, if there's something else you like to know, you can ask. Right now I want to take a a break and have a sip of water first. Mm -hmm.